neighbor, oh neighbor, will the stone cry out for you? <laughs> Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 says, and I want you to read it together if you have it. Once you have it, everybody say amen. And let us read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Come on, let's read together. This. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And so, as I begin to meditate upon this particular word today, the Holy Spirit was very, very, very strict. And I said, God, I hope that you give me what I need today to be able to execute this. And what I mean by that, I mean by strength. Because sometimes you can be going and going and going and you're losing your strength. But when you remember whose strength lies within you, you can continue such a race. And so today I speak from the topic, I hope it's before you, it says the way to prosperity and success. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, I'm about to walk in prosperity. I'm about to walk in success. Now what I can need you to do for me for a few seconds is just check your pew to make sure that there's nobody sitting on the side of you that can possibly stagnate your prosperity and your success. Or oh, y'all y'all better y'all get it. Look look again, look again. Make sure that you're free. Within the next few months, we're about to be literally out of 2023. And some of us have experienced what we call a cycle where your life is still in repeat. Some of us are still going through what we went through last year into this year. But I'm believing God and I'm standing in agreement with you that before this year is out. Are y'all in hearing me? Before this year is out, your status will change. Now, this ain't for everybody. This ain't for everybody. This is only for certain people. Because one thing I realize is that Moses taught me about a mindset. And so, it depends upon a person's mindset. And if your mindset is still the same as it was last year, then there will not be a change. I just have to be real and honest with you. But if you have the spirit of anticipation in this room, and expectancy, I want you to give God a good, good praise. Sometimes it can sound cliche. And some of you sitting right there and saying, I heard this last year. I heard this year before last. I keep hearing this, but ain't nothing changing. Could I tell you that, that you are stuck in a cycle? But if, if there is a people in this room that is not stuck in a cycle, but that is willing to break the cycle in which they were stuck in last year. One more time, and I need you to give them a big one. One, two, three. We need the sound of victorious people. A sound of triumphant people. A people that knows that they know that they know that they know that they know that they know. Amen. And so the book of Joshua. These were instructions given to Joshua after the death of Moses. And I'm going to read just a few of them from verse 3. It says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them 
only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant command thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou might, mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for the opening of their spirits, their God, that they can receive from you, their God, a word that will change and transform their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, their God, that their minds will change and that their thoughts will be rearranged and there will be only thoughts of success in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to get out your books and your pencils and your pens right quick so that we can go through this word. If you have your phone, you can turn to notes and you can take some notes. But these instructions were given to Joshua after the death of Moses. Somebody say, one error gone and another one begins. As we know of Moses, Moses was one that led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and took them even into a journey of the wilderness. And after the wilderness experience, there was a change in command. Some of you, the last couple months, even the last year, have went to your wilderness experience, but now you are expecting the change of command. I came here this morning to prophesy to somebody to let them know that the commander is about to change. <laughs> or oh, ain't nobody hearing me? Ikash, I can't be able to see. Yes, Holy Ghost, I feel that. Ain't nobody hearing me in this room? Come with me, Ryan. I need you. The Holy Ghost just said to tell the people in this room that the commander is getting ready to change. It simply means that God is now shifting you from one dimension of your life and taking you into another dimension. It simply means that the blessing that you were waiting on yesterday is too late for you because God got a new one on the way. It simply means that God wants to bring you into a place where you are in expansion. He's about to increase your territory open your mouth and praise him your taller days are about to over look at your neighbor and say neighbor my taller days are about to over because God is sending me an increase sometimes the people that are carrying you can only carry you so far and so God is saying in this season, uh, there are going to be some people that you get a drop uh, because they can't go where you are going. Uh, uh, ain't nobody hearing me up in here. God's about to shed some people because where he's taking you, they can not go. Moses was a commander. But the problem is Moses was carrying some dead people. Or oh, in a body hearing me up in here. Moses was carrying some complainers. Moses was carrying some people that wanted to go backward. Somebody say backward. And so God said, we're on the mountain, Moses. And you cannot go any further. Can I just preach this word? Could, could I just loose me in this room? You cannot go any further, Moses. But what I'm going to allow you to experience, Moses, is that you're going to see the plane. And I say, Holy Ghost, give me the revelation. And the Lord said to me, Prophet, there are some people that's around you that only have the ability to show you, but they don't have the access. They can't cause you to walk in the promise. Can I prophesy to about 10 of you in this room and declare that those people are about to drop out your life right now because I'm tired of seeing it's time for me to be a partaker of the glory of the Lord sometimes pastor the people can only take you to see the glory 
But the Lord said to me, prophet, I don't need you to see the glory anymore. I need you to embody the glory. I need you to carry the glory. I need you to walk in the glory. Are you nobody talking to me in this room? Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, it's time to embody the glory. Some people are only used to seeing miracles. But God just said to me in my ass, I want to make you the miracle. Or in a body hearing me up in here. I wish I had a set of people that's in my corner today. I, I don't know if they are. Are you shedding or are you going? Are you shedding or are you going? It's time for a new commander. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Are you under subjection and submission to the new commander? Because if you're still carrying her, the attitude of the old commander you're gonna be left in the battle just looking whilst we're fighting and if you're still staring then you're going to be the next casualty but I prophesy over you in this house that you will not stand there and stare and glimpse but right yet you will get ready to go in the city to recover to take back to restore or in a body hear me in this room Moses pastor Moses said God I understand what you're saying and I realize that I cannot go any further but God did not leave Moses defenseless because he said you're gonna call for Joshua Joshua the new commander who is not just gonna be the commander but he's going to be he's gonna be strong and courageous is there any strong and courageous? See, this battle that we're about to fight is not for the weaklings. This battle we're about to fight is for the strong in spirit and the ones that carry good courage. They ain't easily broken. They ain't easily dismayed. They ain't easily tired. But they say, God, if that's what you want me to go through, I'll go through it. Because I know that at the end of this journey, Are y'all in here with me? See, let me show you the difference. Sit down, sit down. The difference between Moses' leadership and Joshua's leadership was that when Moses was leading, the people got hungry. And whilst they got hungry, they said to Moses, did you bring us here so that we die? Are y'all in here with me? So I said, God, what are you saying? And so God said, I had to come down. And I had to feed them man. Right? Because all they were, were a bunch of complainers. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. Quick, say, are you a complainer? And I've been here this time. And I've been doing this this long. And I've been going here this time. And da, 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 da. A bunch of complainers. And so God says this mentality is not right to be a person who is a possessor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you a possessor? See, complainers can't possess because they complain about every single thing. So God says, Moses, your people were complainers. 
And so what I have to do is before Joshua comes on the scene, I have to shed them out. The reason being is because if I allow them to enter into the promise, they will not inherit it. They will become, watch this, they will become slaves in the promise. Could I break it down some more? My dear cousin Gilchrist, I like the body Gilchrist whenever you come to church. You could be in your blessing, but still slave to your mind. Your blessing could be right in the front of you. And you can't see it because you're still slave to the mentality that's in your thoughts. Some people are literally in their blessing. But they're still enslaved to their mind. They cannot see beyond what they think. Are you hearing me? The Lord said to me, prophet, you are not going to be where you are very long. Because you do not stop allowing me to infuse your mind. See, I don't think like you think. Many of you sitting in this room and you say, this room is small. And you're sizing up the room and you're sizing up the people and you're sizing up whatever we're doing. But the person that's standing behind this pulpit is not in this room. I then way ahead of you. Oh, ain't nobody hearing me. And so by the time as you catch on that I'm way ahead of you, you're going to be left here sitting in this same room by yourself because God already sent the Joshua generation into the promise, but you decided that you wanted to be Moses. Prophet, I'm only good enough to see it. I'm only good enough to hear it. Do you know how many people pass I watch us sit right in these beginning churches? Hear the visions of God. Hear the thoughts of God. Hear the mind of God. And guess where you leave them? Then when they see all of a sudden, a shift happen. And all that they were proclaiming and declaring and decreeing, they're now walking in it. Then they start saying, you know that's my past say go from around me. If you did not know me when I was in Pine Tail, then you have to remember not to know me when God puts me in a place of fullness, when God sends us and catapults us and places us into higher places. Because only thing you're going to be Look at the neighbor, say neighbor, is a remembering. They thought that they were going to live and that they were going to go everywhere Moses went. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, they did. He went to the grave. And they went to the grave. You got to be careful, to be able to discern when God is shifting in a season. Because if you're not careful when God is shifting in a season, that same season will die. And you will die with that season. But if I have about 10 of you in here, that's discerning the time. That's discerning the season. That realizes, oh, in nobody have it. Watch this. Watch this. We're going with Moses. And I believe the people of God in that time, their personalities were very strong. We are going with Moses. And here's the word of the Lord. So be. Be careful running behind dead things. Are y'all ain't hearing me in this room? I just had the Holy Ghost say this, and I don't care who it's for, but you know who you is. 
The Lord say, drop that man and drop that boy because he's dead. You know he did, but yet you're trying to give him life. When God says, stop running behind. And you can tell your mom, I tell you that. You get to understand when God shifts, when God moves. To this very day, they're still going into the temple seeking God. But after the death and resurrection of Christ, the Bible tells us that the, the, the temple was torn. It was breaked up and the veil was torn in two. And it declares that the presence of the Lord left that place and entered into man. To this very day, there are high priests still seeking the presence of God in the temple, Pastor. But he is no longer present. The commander had shifted. He came out of the temple and he went upon the cross. He came off the cross and went into a tomb. He came out of the tomb and now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. It simply means that God is changing. God is working. God is moving. And even as I'm speaking to you right now, in the realms of the Spirit, I am seeing a shifting. And angels are to and fro in the realms of the Spirit, walking in your life and shifting things. If you believe this right now, if I be a prophet of God, I declare and I decree now now that as things are shifting you are about to see the manifestation of all the things that God has spoken over you before the foundation of this world look at your neighbor say neighbor the commander has shifted if you don't believe me sit down let me give you more words the Bible says that Moses, 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 he is dead. But as I am with Moses, I will be with you, Joshua. But Joshua has a task to do, Minister Rashad. The task for Joshua is to possess. But the problem is Joshua needs an assurance. The assurance that Joshua got, watch this, let me teach you right quick. The first thing I recognize about Joshua is that despite the fact that he did not get all of the things people would have expected him to get, here's what Joshua did. He moved quickly. So Joshua starts to prepare the man, watch this, to go into a season of possession. But Joshua still needs something from heaven. Are you following me? The Bible says that Joshua came in the presence of a man. And he asked the man, who are you? And the man said, I am the commander of the Lord's army. Oh, y'all ain't getting there. Some of y'all don't even know your Bibles. See, the commander shifted from Moses, but he made himself known to Joshua. And he says, the place where you're standing, Joshua, is holy ground. The commander shifts. The commander once was with Moses. Say neighbor. But he didn't die. All happened was a shift. Remember when they spoke to Moses? And the Bible declares, watch this, that there was a burning bush. The Lord himself spoke from the burning bush. And after speaking to Moses, the same thing. The place where you stand. Holy ground. 
take off your sight. The Bible says Joshua bowed himself to the ground because he recognized that the commander can I give you a revelation? It was the same commander that came out of the temple, that went on the cross, that came out of the tomb, that's on the right hand of the Father. He says, I am the Lord. The commander of the Lord's host, who truly is the commander of the Lord's host? What is the host? That's the first thing you get to break down. There is no greater power and there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. He is the commander of the host of heaven. And so if he is the commander, it simply means that there will be a breaking of rocks. Can I go deeper? Where you are about to possess, have some fortified walls. And the reason why these walls are fortified is because there is milk and honey running through it. Oh, ain't nobody having me. The reason why these walls are fortified is because all the things that God has promised you is lying behind those walls. And the Bible declares that there was no city like unto Jericho. But there is no God like unto Jericho. Like the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the commander of the Lord's house is about to visit your Jericho. And your Jericho is about to come down. Or you're only talking back to me in this room. I want you to prophetically declare it. Prophetically decree it over your house, over your family, over your business, over your life. That Jericho is about to come down. Why? Because the commander. Say, neighbor, you can't go without the commander. Even though Minister Rashad, God tell you that the car is yours. The land is yours. The house is yours. What God wants you to do is God wants you to get ready. Joshua already had the men positioned and ready to possess. But they could not go into Jericho without the commander of the Lord's house. That's why when some of you get the car, you in the car by yourself. That's why you from mechanic to mechanic to mechanic because you buy it all by yourself. If God blesses me with something, then why would God want me to spend all my money fixing the same thing that he blessed me with over and over and over and over? That ain't God. Some of you gonna get mad at me. That's your business. You gotta know what is God from what ain't God. If God bless you with something, if you're blessed, her, then the Bible says that who can curse you? Whom God bless is blessed. If you still walking with the blessings, Minister Lakish, and you still walking in the blessing and you still feeling cursed, do you think that's God? Every dollar. Every single dollar. I know what kind of God you're in the service. If God give you the mortgage, then he's going to help you pay the mortgage. Now you might be saying, prophet, what are you talking about? Listen to me. The Bible says that everything that you do, you have to take it to the Lord in prayer. The problem is we like to do everything by ourselves. 
Seek ye first. And if you seek him, you, you wouldn't have to milk cow. Some of you still milking the cow and you own the cow. talking to anybody today if he blesses you minister Gina then he will give you the means to sustain you anytime you want to see if God is not in something watch the flow of it even if the individual reaches to the end of the barrel the oil is still in the house If you don't believe me, let me give you a word. The Bible says that this man died and leave his widow. But he was a faithful man to the church. And only thing was left in the house was some oil. And because of his faithfulness, the oil was multiplied. That means, Minister Rashad, in the blessing, when you reach to the end of this bottle, because it's God, because God tests his faithfulness, because God tests his endurance, because God tests our relationship. He said, even though you're this low, when you're about to go to rock bottom, I'll catapult you up. Anybody ever been to rock bottom? Where they thought that everything was all over. They thought that it was all finished. They thought they had to throw in the towel. But all of a sudden, they started running around the church with the same towel. They thought they were going to throw in. Oh, ain't nobody here me up in here. When you thought that it was all over, it was done, it was finished. And God counted you up. He counted you in a second time. And a second time. And a second time. Let me give you a quick testimony. I want to pay off my house mortgage in two years. That, that's what I said. Could I just testify that month before last, I did not know how I was going to pay the mortgage. And I can hear some of my religious people say, we used to prophet. We shouldn't have a problem paying mortgage. I wonder if he's teaching from the church. I did not know. God allowed one situation to happen. I heard Lady Bernice. Oh, Jesus, just so horrible with money. He just don't know what he's doing. I just tell him all over. And I said to him, I said, one thing you ain't got to worry about is a roof coming from over your head and the light cutting off. <laughs> Unless PPL freaking out. The mindset I have, because I know that he said according to Joshua. Let's go back to Joshua. This is what he said. He says, let's read verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest what? Observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the what? The right hand or to the left, that thou mayest what? Uh-huh, what else? Okay, watch this. Go up. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to do what? Read. Uh -huh. All the days of thy life, as I was what? So will I be with? And what else? You can't fail me. I don't care what come up in my life. When I remember what he said to me, he said, prophet, as I was with Sini, I am with you. And so I know that you cannot fail me. So I say, Nikki, please stop freaking out, Jeffrey. See, that's my mind. And I said, I said, Nikki, God created a situation Oh, come on, Jesus. If God have to cause your blesser to break down in the car and you got to help them, God will put you in a position to get a blessing. Or oh, ain't nobody hearing me up in here. When I heard the call, I said, yes, that's it, coming up. I ain't have to worry about nothing because I know that God. 
cannot fail me. Guess what I paid Minister Gina? Two months. Now, God, I need you to hurry up that off. <laughs> See, God can only use you based off your thinking. He can only go as far as your thoughts. He can only go rather yet as far as your mindset. So if your mindset is stubborn, say neighbor, if your mindset is stubborn, then you will remain the mule. Do you ever see what they do to the mules? And no matter how much you push them, no matter how much you kick them, no matter how much you try to encourage them, no matter how much times you try to talk to them, they ain't moving nowhere. So I began, I began to realize something the Lord say, Prophet, you get mules in your church, you get mules in your family, you get mules on your job, you got to be able to recognize the mules in your life. Because these are the ones who can't go into Jericho. You can imagine, Minister Shamika, you saying, forward! How many times I got to say, come on, open your mouth. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him glory. You don't even know why I'm telling you to do that. But because you got a mule spirit. Somebody say, hee Fools sometimes. We are foolish. And sometimes we're ignorant. We do not discern what the Lord is doing in his house. You have to be able to discern the spirit of God and his movements. Know when he's in the front. Know when he's in the back. Know when he's in the middle. If you can't do that, you're going to miss. So Joshua was given instructions. It's time for you to possess. It's time for you to walk in the promises of God. It's time for you to step out of your comfort zone. What was their comfort zone? Their comfort zone was Moses. They depended so much on Moses past the battle that when Moses died, they had to die with him. Don't die with me. You better keep pressing. Because I'm going to get my reward. And I ain't looking back for my Grammy. After I would have given my service unto the Lord. It is not your duty to die with me. Now I'm going to give you a, a point of revelation. Write this down. Some people will physically die with you. Let me teach you something quick. Some people are anointed to be with you. They are anointed to be in the same season as you. And so no matter when that season is, is up, if they don't die after, they will shortly die. The Holy Spirit revealed that to me some years back when I began to question about why all these people dying after one of the persons I know died. And the Lord says, because they were all connected. And so, sorry for whoever connected to me. <laughs> we got to go to glory together. <laughs> but it happens. It's the reality of it. Now, the, the question is, like she's saying, once you go in the same place, now if you die, you go to hell on you. But I know one thing. I know my election is sure. I know where my soul is. I know how to find God. Some people with you, women of God, but they don't know how to find God. You can't be with me and, 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 and depend solely on me that you can't find the same glory in you. If you can't pray without me, you're going to die. 
spiritually. Joshua had to gather people that were like-minded. In order for you to be able to possess in this season, you have to find like-minded people. Write this down quickly. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal himself in three ways. Write this down quickly. And then I'm going to come into here until some of you are tired. He is going to visit you in ministry. He's going to visit you in your family. And he's going to visit you on your jobs. Within the next six months, that means we're going over into the new year, you're going to see the Holy Spirit evidently. Write that down and make that big. So you're not going to be lost. You're going to be able to see him. Now, what is he saying? This is the year of the shepherd. That means the shepherd is about to lead us into something. Something that is bigger than us. But the truth to this is, it's bigger to us on our outer appearance. But we are bigger than it in our inner appearance. That means that we have the capacity to facilitate the blessing that is before us. That means you have room enough to receive it. Are you hearing me? I, had, I just had to dumb it down just now. Because some of y'all was like, what? You're going to have room enough to receive it. Simple. Okay? And so what he is saying, he is saying, prepare yourself. Get ready. Because it's going to happen in the next six months. And what you could do, since some of y'all don't believe me, put my name right on the side of that and the date. So you can come back to me and round me, and then I can rebuke you. <laughs> Works, right? Because it, it ain't me. I release in God's word. It got to be you. It ain't me, because this is what the Lord is saying. It has to be you. And so I need you to stand quickly in this room. Junior, give me something. And I need you to stand. I want you to grab every hand. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Grab every hand. Hallelujah. See, that's the lady there who's round me with the mortgage. Hallelujah. Yes, son. Scratch across the room. Across the room. And then some of y'all ain't scratched in a long time. Let them bones crack. That's a sense that something is about to happen as well. Y'all ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, as I bring this people before you, Here's what the Lord said. As they walked around Jericho, they were told to walk around a number of times. And after the last time, they were told to shout. Because Jericho is about to be digged up. One of the strangest things that I recognize is that the Lord made me to understand Jericho was experiencing a shaking, not from the top, but from the ground up. When God does something from the ground up, he is completely rooting it up. That means they will never be able to build that particular wall ever again. What that simply means, can I give you a quick revelation? You ain't going to fight the same thing again. If you still fighting the same thing from last year, it simply means that it was not broken from the ground up. It was just the head being um, touched or bothered with. The roots were still in the ground. But as I pray and prophesy over you today, those things that are in your life that seems to be rooted, 
that seems not to move and that seems not to end. I prophesy today in the name of Jesus that that cycle is over. Because as Jericho break up, so shall the situation break up. One second for me. And the Lord said to me, the reason why the stronghold is still there is because the little man is still present. The little man is still empowering the strong man. You may say, prophet, who's the little man? It's the same people working on the same level as you. That's empowering the person that's over you. And so God said, I'm not going to hit the head first. I'm going to go from the bottom and I'm going to come up. I'm going to count to three and I want you to give God praise as God begins to break up these walls in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, pray! Let the walls break up. Let the walls break up. Let the walls break up. Never to return. I'm not fighting this anymore. I'm not fighting this anymore. I declare in the name of Jesus that your expiry date is today. I declare in the name of Jesus that your hole is breaking up. Your stronghold is breaking up. Your grip is breaking up. God, destroy it. We command in the name of Jesus that every follow ground be broken up now. Somebody break it, 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 somebody break it. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Come on, somebody. Now clap your hands and give him praise. For this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What is he saying? He's saying you have to continue to remind yourself day and night that he cannot fail you. Day and night that he has promised you. Day and night you have to walk in the promises of God. You have to remind yourself what God say and don't lose hope. The psalmist put it this way. But let me just finish this. That thou mayest observe you see that there? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall, watch this, for then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Write this down. Put it in your phone quickly. Use your phone. It's quicker. Success is not a cycle. Watch this. Let me give you a quick revelation. If I own a company, uh, a Gilchrist, and I'm making the same figure, I'm not successful. <laughs> because I'm only hitting even every single time. It's when I make above that which I anticipated. It's when I become successful. What does that mean? If you're still fighting the same thing, you ain't successful yet. You have not won it yet. In battle, if I still fight Minister Gina, and every time I come into the battlefield, I still fight Minister Gina, it simply tells me, I ain't prosperous yet. I ain't success. I did not overcome. It makes us to understand that you have to go 
levels. You have to go dimensions. And there's something that they say, every level is another devil. But if you're still fighting the same devil, that means you ain't moving up no levels. Because the same devil is not on the same, is on all of the levels. They, they have their levels. So, I begin to discern my life. And whenever I see a repeat of something, I know that I'm still fighting. Write this down. Fighting is okay. Losing is not. So you might feel bad, but I'm still fighting, prophet. That's okay. What it tells me, you're still in the battle. Now, your determination has to be to win, to overcome, to be done with this devil. Get it? So if you are in a cycle, don't get comfortable. One of the things I say from time to time, whenever I'm called to preach, wherever I'm called to preach, and as they call me from different um, um, various of churches, different varieties, different denominations, I go and I sit with great people, people who I never thought I would sit with, people who I see on TV. I sit with them. I talk with them. And guess what I say to myself? This ain't it. I can't get comfortable right there because I believe that there's more. So when I see them, I say, oh, praise the Lord. Good God bless you. I hug them and shake their hand. But I said, there's somebody greater. There's somebody better that I have to come in contact with because he told me that he will cause me to go before kings and queens. So I can't just sit, settle for whatever here. After I come with the prime minister office, I'm not set up. You know why? Because there are broader bands for me. He says, wherever my feet shall tread upon. That means that there is an expansion in my life. And if expansion in in your life today, I prophesy now in the name of Jesus that your life will begin to expand. Watch this. Expansion don't come to everybody. Because God can only fill you based off what you can handle. So here's what I did. I went to um, Gilchrist and I got an, um, um, education and information. And I said, this is how you sit at the queen's table. This is how you shake their hand. Because I'm preparing myself so that when I go across the border, I know how to sit at the king's table because the queen is dead. I know how to do this. I know how to do that because I went and I expanded the knowledge so that he can now carry me in the knowledge in which I have. Write this down quickly. If you want more, think more. Let me go because I spit in the wrong fire today. It's up to you, literally. You could not tell me, Pastor Beto, 10 years from now, I would have been here. If we would have looked at our present situation way back in Carmichael Road, sometimes five people in Carmichael Road, if I had stayed there in my mind, we would have never moved. But I saw something else. And if you notice something, this, this, this is how God works. God says, I'm going to give you enough to make you uncomfortable. When he shifted us, Pastor Beto, and he started loading us up, we was like, in here too small, it was only five of us. And we felt like the room too small. And here's what the Lord said to me. The Lord says, it wasn't the room. It was the mind. So you could be in a big box, but you're small in your mind. You can be in a small box, but you're big in your mind. And if the box is full to its capacity, then there is something that is called an overflow. It simply means that he will fill you to the point where you start pouring out. 
and eventually you start trickling from Carmichael to Mount Carmel. And from Mount Carmel, you're gone back. You, you ain't learned your lesson. So you got to now pour him out some more. I tell you, come out. You're gone back. I pour more on you. And you had to go running this time. Can I ask a quick question? How many of you still trying to put on your size six? What is it telling you? Stop going back. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Now they ain't talking to me. I can get this on. They stop making girdles. <laughs> Come on. Let me go home. You understand? Yeah. Stand for me. Let's, let me just get this out of my way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you for your word. We thank you that it did not rain upon deaf ears. But that we thank you that your word is going out to accomplish that which you have sent it out to. Now, Father, as you, extend, uh, as you expand this people, we pray in the name of Jesus, their God, that their mindset will change. And that they will be able to be successful. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord Jesus. The Lord said to tell you, this will be sudden. Sudden. Yes. Yes. Write that word down. Keep that in your mind. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant them good success and that you will cause them, their God, to walk in courage. You will cause them, Father, in the name of Jesus, to be strong and courageous. Father, we thank you for this Joshua generation that is about to possess not only land, but mindsets. A right and perfect mindset. The highest mindset, which is in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we bless you now for all the heroes. We pray that you will now grant unto them more than success, but that you will grant unto them favor. Because we know, Lord God, favor can take us where money can't. And so we bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to ask you just to quickly bring your offering.